I think the last time I actually went and physically worked on the job, I lost my toenails. Um, <laughs> they, they just, after walking and carrying steel and doing that for a, a day or two, they got black and blue and they fell off <laughs> my big toes. <laughs> well, how does that happen? No joke. So, you know, I don't know how that happens, but you know, it, it, it's true. Here's the thing. And you saw it. My foremen are working foremen. Every one of my foremen wear their tools. Yep. Okay. We, first of all, in my industry, there's not enough money in my industry. I can't charge enough to have non-working foremen. But secondly, how do you get? How do you expect to lead somebody and get people to do this very hard work if you're not willing to get in there and do it and yourself and get in there? And so, that is also one of the problems with getting people wanting to do our industry. They think, well, I get to a foreman level, and and I don't have to do anything. Well, that may be true on a general contractor's crew, but that ain't true working for me. You, we can't we can't afford it and that's not the way it is you've got you set the pace you set the example Ramel being that superintendent level and all my superintendents will step in and put their tools on so to your point when they need to they get in there when they're so busy coordinating all their work and they can't they can't but when they can they get in there to set the tone and make sure the pace can be set and let's say you get on a job and it's a hard budget to hit the way to fix that is the foreman or superintendent get in there and show everybody, yes, we can hit this budget. This is how it gets done. And then there's no excuses. You take away the excuse, right? And these tools, Chuck, that he's talking about, th it's not just, you know, the importance of a tool on a job. Everybody understands that. But when you're a rod buster, you carry your tools. You have a tool belt, and on that belt yeah. are just myriad things. Uh, I, I, and, and they're all heavy. You know, and I remember le leaving the bridge where we, we were working and then showing up at the next site at these inverted T's. And I got out of the production van and, you know, Jack comes right up first thing. He's got this 35 pound belt. He's like, here are your tools. Don't forget your tools. You know, <laughs> you, you got a little spring in your step. I saw a glint of optimism in your face. Well, screw that. Put your tools I'm back. I'm going to crush that TV right point. now. <laughs> yeah. Forget about that. So it's like you yeah. just get. You just get so used to carrying around an extra 35 or 40 pounds all the time, yeah. all the time. And um, what you're saying is, congratulations, you're a foreman. Put your tools yep. on. Congratulations, tools you're on. a supervisor. Put your tools on. Congratulations, yeah. you run the business. Put your tools on. Right. right. Here's one of the problems that we have in some of the other trades. They don't do that anymore. The superintendent, the foreman, they don't put their tools on. They don't. They want to lead from their pe their pickup truck. So as soon as they drive away, you know what everybody at that crew says? Oh, look at that fat ass. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know if I could say that. But anyway, go ahead. Man. Look at that. <laughs> You're good. That guy. You know. Oh, he just comes over here and points and screams and yells. Well, why don't you get out of your truck and show us how you want it done and and get in there and engage with those guys? And I do believe that's one of our problems in our industry. You know, everybody wants to be a supervisor. God, dude, that's the that's the problem, and the that's a macro problem. Everybody wants to yeah. get to the point where they don't have to do the work. And it feels yeah. like now, and I, I, I don't, I don't want to get all soapboxy about it, but you know me. I mean, I, I've been talking about work ethic for 15 years and my personal yeah. belief and a belief that's been shared with me by virtually everybody I've ever met and worked with on that show, that work ethic is under siege. Something has happened in the society and it's rotting from the inside out. And I've, I've talked with hundreds, maybe thousands of people about, A, is it really happening? And B, what can we do about it? Do you still think that there's a skills gap? Or do you think that now <laughs> it's more of an attitude gap? I, I just said this in an interview the other day. I, I spent the first seven years of MicroWorks talking about a skills gap and genuinely believing that if we could equip more people with the necessary skills, the gap would shrink. I still think that's part of it, but now it's a will gap too. It's just a straight up crisis of will. And I don't know what to do about it. I'm like, in my world, Dirty Jobs is a fun show. And, mm -hmm. I, and I never wanted to hide from the fact that it is hard and it is sometimes dangerous. And it's not for the faint of heart. And those things might discourage people from exploring a career in the trades. But at the same time, you know, I mean, you were there. We, I, ta I paused and talked to you 
a lot, partly to catch my breath, but partly because I wanted to hear from you (laughs) about, you know, your thoughts on college, your thoughts on recruitment, your frustrations as an entrepreneur. I want to hear about Jennifer. I want to hear about how your marriage and your wife became your partner and how you two are two sides of the same coin and how Shelby really wouldn't exist without her talents too. Oh, well, there's so much truth to that. I mean, I worked for my dad, you know, for a long time. And then Jennifer and I had this discussion about, you know, my dad's half Puerto Rican. So at the, um, you, you wouldn't know that I'm part Puerto Rican, right? I've got 25% Puerto Rican blood. In me. Unbelievable. You can see it in my olive skin and, and uh, complexion, right? No, 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 that doesn't work. No, no, no look, not, not so much. So, <laughs> so, but back in the, the day, you know, the DBE, which disadvantaged businesses or minority contractors, my dad was a minority contractor through his Spanish heritage, right? And then through hard work and dedication to the trade, my dad's company outgrew that program. He became too successful. Okay. So I'd always had in my back of my mind, I said, you know, Jennifer could do this. You know, at the time she was a teacher and she didn't really have much of an interest in it, but we did start Shelby Erectors just with the thought that maybe someday, you know, we want to get into it. Well, as it turns out, seven or eight, maybe 10 years into her teaching career, she got surplus as a teacher, which basically means she got let go. Mm. Um, That's a great word, the by the way. And now, yeah, yeah surplus. surplus. Yeah, <laughs> we're not firing surplus. people anymore. We're surplusing you. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. But they're surplusing her, but there was a teacher shortage, right? So you go figure. Hmm. I don't get that one. Not that she was a bad teacher. She was a head volleyball coach and stuff like that. So I don't really get into the politics of, of these things. So then we found ourselves with a need to... Well, Jen needs to replace her income, and her income as a teacher wasn't a lot. So, hey, let's let's just kick up Shelby Rector's, Jen. I I got a contractor that'll give you your first job because in order to get certified as a DBE with DOT and stuff like that, you're going to have to have experience. So, and it can't be my experience because then you would just be a front, right, for me. And that's not what this is. So she went, we got her a job, fifty thousand dollar contract, took you know, six months or so completed her first job and she says to me and she'll tell you this man i can do this we do one job at a time i i could do this right Mm -hmm. and i I looked at her and i laugh i said yeah that'd be great knowing that you can't just do one job at a time you know (laughs) (laughs) you get one job then next thing you know how do you keep those people busy so you need more jobs and then so every time she does the active job list now she goes 42 jobs jack what happened to one job at a time? (laughs) (laughs) She said, you lied to me. I said, I didn't lie to you. I just smiled at you and let you think that maybe you could do it that way. (laughs) I surplused the truth. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) 